Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Right here we have a Marconi TF2103 wide range oscillator. Yeah, that goes up to a megahertz. And this is a pretty old piece of gear. I've already opened the top cover up. It says 18 volts DC because it's got a option in there. Um, if I remember rightly, there's two versions you could have. You can have either battery powered or power, as in mains power. I, I might be remembering that wrong. Um, so it's got this system in here where you have battery packs or mains transformer system, which is what this has got. It's also got a mains powered system in here. And that's why these terminals aren't all hooked up. It's all been done a bit of a odd way. But I think that works still. I'm just trying to remember how the hell this thing goes. Mechanic Instruments mains power unit. There we go. 5 watt load. Output 15 to 17 volt DC. So, yeah. I think you could have battery packers on. That's what the option there was, if I remember rightly. Yeah, those are the output terminals there and those are blanks. So it's quite an old thing, it's got a whole bunch of adjustments in there, a bunch down the side there. Um, actually I think the spot and cover comes up too. Yes it does. Gives you a nice clear view of the inside, the various adjustments right around the place. It's got some kind of indicator there, I'm not quite sure what that actually is. It's like a, um, a bulb, but I think it's used for some kind of function instead of actual being a bulb. It's a pretty old piece of tech. So it's got a couple of big old electrolytics in there and various other ones. But I don't actually know how it even works or if it works. So we'll power it up and see what happens. It might get smoke, who knows? It's been a while since it's been turned on. So power it on. No smoke. Alright. Let's hook it up and uh, see if we've got an output. This is that time when you hope that the the, uh, the ground isn't like mains referenced too badly or something <laughs> to make sure it's not got to uh, potentially blow up my oscilloscope. I should do that too, shouldn't I? Check for a voltage differential between there and ground, just in case. Nothing there. AC. Seventeen volt difference on AC. Mm. Yeah, it's probably right. I don't know where you can see how noisy that is. Definitely seems dirty. There's lots of main tone stuff on that as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's too high frequencies. Yeah. So there's definitely mains ripple there coming through. And there's the actual oscillator frequency in there. But obviously it's very jittery and very noisy. Yeah. So I'm guessing the mains caps on this are pretty shot. Voltage wise, well, let's see, I set at one volt. And that's definitely way below what it should be. Output's very low. So there should be 2.5 volts there. And I'm on millivolts per division. So 200 millivolts per division. I'm reading a peak to peak about 400 millivolts, so it's definitely not the 200 volt, uh, two and a half volts it says it's supposed to be doing. So this has some serious issues, all right. And it's certainly got dirty switches and stuff too. So I, th I think this really needs a full recapping for start. 
Both how much noise is coming through there. I mean, these are acting like antennas as well, so it really doesn't help. It's not great probing. So what I should do is grab the probes for the scope. Do it this way as well. And uh, let's have a poke around the circuitry and see what kind of ripple and stuff we're seeing on these supplies. I'm going to assume the casing's ground. So let's have a look in here. That's really showing up almost nothing, really. It's on that one. Yeah. I've got a DC, DC offset turned on, so I should be offsetting OK. Not really seeing much there. Let's check the supply output from the top here. Which one's. That's the negative there, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the negative, pretty sure. Not ground reference. Well, let's do that. There we go. Now we've got DC offset. Yeah, it's measuring 1.2 volts. That's not right. <laughs> oh, it's peak to peak. Of course, I've got the bloody pop of display on there. So that's got 1.4 volts peak to peak ripple, does it? It looks like it does. It's the AC coupling. So that's 200 millivolts of vision. Yeah, so this is not great. It's a whole lot of noise coming out of the power supply. So that's probably messing the whole thing up for a start. So I need to look at that. And this jump is inside for the voltages, yeah. I think I've been in this before, it seems familiar. And it's this linking across those two is a bit weird. I don't know what stories from that. Um, let's have a look. What's this? Okay, this one? Here we go. Look at this one. So, mains power unit has one capacitor. Not, sorry, two capacitors. Which I'm kind of in the way of. Hold on, let's just uh, yeah, move that over. And you can see, so down there's the bit we're looking at right now, which I think is too noisy for my liking. Right, so we'll have a look at that first. Place those caps, bound to need it. Get the ripple right down to start with first. And, um, then we'll look at the rest of this thing. So, what were you saying before about these supplies and things going to the output? So that's part of the power switch, which also has some smoothing caps on there. Output is controlled by these. Okay, so showing the DC output through these transistors to the output itself. TP1, TP2, interesting over one. You think you'd say Apple, wouldn't you? So that's the range settings, the resistor backs. TP1 is the ground, there we go, there's a the ground there, so TP1 is the ground. Frequency control, so this is all the oscillator section here. So this is a resistor divider. 
Yeah. So this is a resistor divider. Right. So that's what it's doing, it's shunting some of this to the ground to, to load it down. And it's putting fixed output to these transistors here. So we've got a uh, MP and a PMP there. So it's a push pull pair, effectively. Okay. And these are all the range selections which feed up to the oscillator section here. So that's a pretty simple thing really. It's messy inside the box, but you look at the diagram and think that's oh, pretty easy. So lack of output, poor voltage regulation, oscillation coming through the power supply could easily cause problems with it and cause cancellations. Could be affecting the oscillator. It could be these transistors here getting weak. Um, it could even be something like a shorted capacitor or a leaky capacitor. It could be loading it down. I think it slides out sideways, I'm pretty sure. Let's take these off. You want to go that around. Black and red, black on the left, there we go. That's easy enough to do. Now, can I slide this out of here? I think I can. Hope he's going to move. It kind of slides. There we go. Just getting caught up a little bit. So this should be interesting. See what's in here. So I'm plugging it from the very end as well, in case I've got some earth, well, neutral leakage or something like that. Never know. How do we get into this? Looks like it's probably just those two screws there. Let's open the power supply up and see what's actually in here. I believe there's probably some bad caps in here. Being the age of this thing, whether that edge is going to be pretty old, it's going to be seven, probably seven years at least. Um, Does that come out? Does that pull out? No. I figure out to get that part. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's bad caps in here. The age of it's going to be a sign of potential there. I mean, it's a pretty old thing. I'll get the screw out, would be good. It's a bit weird, it's sticking. Oh, this is the top side, so I still need to get into here. Here we go, it's going to pop off. Right, just do that. Kind of wants to come apart. So there's a little transformer. Uh, these screws are supposed to be captive, that's why I trouble getting it out. Right, that explains it. Let's put those captive screws back in there. Okay. Venna Electronics. So they've also subcontracted sub, uh, the power supply section. What we got? 500 UF, 50 volt. 500 UF. I could always increase it, couldn't I? 
Yeah, it's a thousand sixty-three volt. I'll shuck that in instead. <laughs> it's gonna be better. And what's the other one here? Can't see. I'll have to take that one out and see what it is after. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna take this top frame off so I can get this electrolytic lifted out. Well, I've broken his wires off. At least I know where they go. Make a note. Red goes the positive, purple goes the negative. Yeah, that's uh, 500 volt, uh, 500 UF cap is probably the biggest thing they can fit in. That's probably why I chose it only because it's the biggest thing they can fit in that box. So, these days you can fit about twice as big a size in this space. Anyway, so we'll take this part out, replace it with that one. Once I've got that one out, I'll try and get this other cap out. At least this will be leaded solder, so I should be able to get it out easy enough. Look at that, easy. Right, so yeah, it's a Plessy. It was an English brand, wasn't it? Made in England, yeah. Plessy. It's been out for a while. Let's uh, get this meter here. I just want to test that cap. It'd be funny if it still <laughs> tests that okay, wouldn't it? Yep, nothing like that. Serious ESR and just have a look, see what we get. Hundred sixty nine narrow farad, two point three K ohms. <laughs> yeah, I think I said it. Right. Compare it to the new one. which it may have trouble reading because it's actually a very large value for this thing. Uh, yeah. Oh, I think this is bloody wrong. Again, we've got to change frequency. 100 hertz, Let's try again. This thing has trouble reading big, cap big capacitors, I can't read them. So maybe it's a problem with that too. Let's try again. I think 500's in its range though. Here we go. But yeah, it's just not right. Still, there's 4.8k ohms. So, yeah, no good, I reckon. Let's try and get this other cap out and see what that is as well. Winged in here. I'll probably wiggle it out. What is it anyway? 25 volt, 100 UF. Yeah, I've got some of them. It's a bit of a tight space. Here we go. So positive is this end. What do we get? 100 UF, 1.2 ohms. Marginal might actually still be okay. 1.2 ohms is maybe a little bit high. So, 100 UF. And negative is that side. Let's compare it to this one 0.5 ohms. So, it's certainly lower. I wonder if I should put a larger one in there as well. Let's look at the diagram. Which one's which? No bloody idea. Uh, well, I'd say the big one. C1, yeah, it's marked on the board, so that's C2. So it is directly on the output, so that's probably quite an important one, too. So maybe I'll upgrade that one as well to a larger size. So I've got something, yeah, 220s.
Oh, that's a jack on. Hmm. It's not the best brand. Put it on metal. It's even better than what was in there, I suppose. 0.3 ohms. Yeah, it looks alright. So we'll put it upgrade as well. And making them larger should actually improve the smoothing somewhat. I wonder if I'll put caps in, I always try and orientate them so you can read them. So if someone comes in later on to replace it, it may be me, maybe somebody else, who knows, in you know, 20 years time or whatever, then at least they can see what the value is before they take it out. So let's try and make it easy. Oh, it's just that one. And this one here, which doesn't have the right leg spacings. Um, do I have something physically larger? Probably not. No. Unless it got to a 2200, but it's, even that's not much better. Yeah, I think I have to live with the leg spacings. more this way away from the transformer I think. So we put a positive the best. And just lay that one down, hopefully it'll be alright. It's not like it's gonna get a lot of shock load or anything like that, it's just you know it's a piece of lag gear, it's not gonna be put under great stress, at least it shouldn't be. And I'll probably put some kind of glue on it as well to hold it down. Right, solder us in. Double check I put it in the right around. Yes, I did. Waste place double check. I'm the first time I got it wrong. Mine's pretty hot, so pretty smoky. I'm not going to worry about taking the flux off this. Um, it's not really going to matter. The board's covered in flux and more the previous work than the, from the factory, so I think it's going to be fine. Turn this leg off. And that can stay where it is, I think. It's just running along the trace anyway. Alright. So the better like this will be a bit cleaner on the upper, we'll find out in a minute. Get it back together before I try it out. Just, uh, don't like having live mains vultures floating around. Hope that was a uh, required modification because uh, I had to have done something without actually needing it. But I think those caps are bad. The one certainly seems to be. So I'm still struggling to find decent test gear to use, eh, to actually buy in order to uh, make videos with. The price is getting ridiculous. So it's being real hard to, well, really hard to try and find anything I can use. It's quite frustrating, really. I want to buy this broken test gear, but we've got sellers which won't ship to me or uh, 
shipping prices which are ridiculous or even just the items themselves can be ridiculous prices sometimes uh, put these back in again <coughs> right let's power this up and see if we get a better waveform out of it look at that nothing there all the ripples gone so yeah that was definitely a problem so we fixed something let's cut to the output and see what we get here best buddy probing that is looking a lot better there's no DC offset so the output does look weak but it's not noisy like it was before so we definitely fixed that part of it but the output is nowhere near where it should be so that makes you wonder a little bit if I'm missing something obvious here let's do 100 kilohertz which is what got it set to triggering is being a bit tricky because it's a bit there is still some picked up noise but it's not being it's induced noise it's not something else So that's 10 kilohertz, yep. And 1 kilohertz, yep. And 100 hertz. And about 10 hertz. So yeah, the actual frequencies are accurate, just the output seems really weak. So I need to look into what's causing that. But at least we're getting somewhere. Coupling cap C3, I mean that could well be affecting the output. Options, what options we got. It didn't matter which range I was in. So it's not like one of these capacitors here is shorted out and all that to drag it down to ground. Um, but if that one was shorted it would drag more down because it's got these other resistors here. A shorter cap could be a reason. C14, C15, wherever they are. That's a possibility, you should consider that. C3 being high ESR, possibly. Well, they could also have weak transistors. Now, there's also a C2 here as well, which is obviously passing a signal through it as well. RV7. So there's a preset in here. Maybe there's an issue with that preset. Could be that's dirty and not making contact very well, so let's drop the, the level right down. That's obviously for calibrating the level output. So when it's in switch position 1, it goes through the resistor. When it's in switch position 2, it goes through here. SC. So SC and SB are opposing switches. So when it's posing means it comes through here, shoves that main power supply rail onto here to power that up, disconnects that input from that resistor so that isolates that one, runs it through here into this side which is the input of that section and obviously it's a switch trigger as it says so that's doing the um, sine wave square wave switching so it's a sine wave coming through from here and that will be chopping up to make it a square wave taking the edges off it to make it sharp edges there's two switches which are linked together right there's one or the other they're toggled together that's what that that's why it's done that way and that's why they're opposing it's one or the other switch it's not one single switch that's why okay that makes sense now it means we can ignore this smith trigger section because it's completely disconnected from the circuitry when it's in the sine wave mode However, if I put it in square wave, that bypasses this 
transistor here and this has got supply rails going to it so if that is a square wave going to these I should get full voltage out if it's something in this section here All right. but if I'm using a square wave because it will be chopping rail to rail which I think it will be chopping rail to rail then that should eliminate or prove part of the circuit so I think I'll do the square wave and we'll have another look let's probe on that point there So right now, let's speed it up a bit, let's do 1 kilohertz. So I'm getting that low level sine wave there, if I do a, try and do 1 kilohertz square wave, I get nothing. Right, so sine wave I've got a little bit. And square wave, I have nothing. So that circuit isn't working at all either, which might help narrow it down actually. So which means either it's got multiple faults, which is actually possible. There's some capacitors right in there too. Um, there's a couple of red capacitors right in the middle of the board, back there. They're likely to be bad. Um, I think I'd have to strip the chassis apart to get those out. So I'm going to undo these screws on the back end, take the back panel assembly off. I think that will allow me access. I might give that switch here a bit of a spray and give it a clean, in case I know the switch is a little bit dirty anyway. power is off. Also this big cap here which is probably SC1. This cap over here is a uh, good question. I can't see a marking. Don't know. I haven't actually checked power supply voltages yet have I? I verified they're working. I verified they're clean. What voltage was it? I could be missing the most obvious thing, couldn't I? What is this voltage? Sixteen point three volts. So I think it said it's supposed to be seventeen, isn't it? Something like that. So it's pretty close. So it's not going to be voltage being a problem. Let's see if this changed anything by giving it a clean. Still nothing here on square wave. Side wave looks the same, so clean that switch hasn't done anything. I don't think it would. It needed doing anyway. So next thing. Which one's C3? Let's figure that out. That's the next suspect I think. So even though I'm using this circuitry here, this circuitry here is not doing anything. So C20, C21 are suspects as well. Seems there's no output at all from the square wave. C3 being bad as a possible could affect both. Could be it doesn't like the square wave at all. So we could probably look at that. C2 is the feedback from the sine wave from the oscillator. C1's right here. That's a massive cap for that. That's interesting. What on earth is that doing? Right, let's look at the um, layout. C3, yeah, so the one I was looking at before trying to find the labelling is C3. Okay, so let's see if I've got a cap which I can use to replace that with, and we'll replace that cap first. Uh, so we've got C2 and C18. Now, C2 is one of the ones I was suspicious about as well. Yeah, so C2 and C18 being in the middle of the board are potentially bad as well. So C2 we know is coming from the oscillator. What's C18 doing? C18 is over here. I 
across the supply rail. C18, C22, the extra supply smoothing. So the fact we had a lot of ripple on the supply, so those caps here are probably bad as well. Although it probably doesn't need them now anyway, because I put those decent ones in the supply. Um, so those are probably bad as well, but it doesn't matter so much, I don't think. But I've this is worried about those. So C3 and C2 I think I'll be looking at next. So let's look at C3 first. Just like 500 UF. That probably has to be uh, the same part put back in again, the same value. Because it's in series with the oscillator it might affect the frequencies or how it performs or something like that. So I'm going to keep the same value there or at least something close to it. I've got some 470s, that should be close enough. Yes, the power is off. There we go. Right. Positive is marked as being this side anyway, so that's fine. Well, let's try it. Let's check it out and see what it looks like. Okay. Serious ESR one hundred hertz. Positive was towards me, and that was that way around, so it should be like that. Six hundred and sixty with. So the capacitance is a bit above rating, but the ESR looks okay. But the fact the capacitance has increased means it's probably on the way out. Um, an observation I've made is often the capacitance value would increase slightly before it fails. So let's get eight. No, no, I've got four seventies and stuff here, so. Let's get one of these. So it rates at 50 volts, that's actually a slightly high rating. 470 UF. We've got this in. What is this thing? What brand is that? Matsuta. Matsuta? Is it? Oh, somewhere. Like M. Shove that in there. Do you know what I forgot to do? I was going to reinforce that capacitor, wasn't I? So it wouldn't move around in the power supply. I forgot to do it. That's probably right anyway. Probably just being pedantic about it. Let's get this thing going again. Keep forgetting to turn the thing on. Always make sure the parts don't go flying when you cut the leads off. Because you never know where they're going to go if they go flicking off somewhere. Could be a disaster waiting to happen. If you don't notice where it goes. I don't get the chance to see where it goes. Right, well, let's try this again. No, no difference there. Still very low output, so it's not that. Well, we keep looking. So that's C1, which was uh, that was in your side section. So 200, uh, sorry, 2000 UF. 12 volt. The oscillator itself is working okay, so I'm doubtful that this particular capacitor is going to be a problem. So I think it's probably more likely to be some other kind of issue with it. And now I've replaced that cap. Um, now that's like the suspicious one done. The Smith trigger may not work if the level going into it is way too low for it to trigger, right? 
all the output stuff, all the levels are on the output side of it after the, after the splitter circuitry. So it might be the signal at this point is very weak, it's not the upper circuitry which is weak, it's the input to this circuitry which is weak. So I think I need to probe back a little bit further in the circuitry, probably on that cap there actually, and see what levels we're getting there. So let's do that. Uh, we have to reference it against this here. We are on one volt, two and a half volts here, so that shouldn't matter anyway. So with what we're getting here, let's cap. Minus eleven volts, DC, and minus two point two. But it's not showing a waveform or anything. Am I interpreting something wrong here? I might be. Let's just uh, look at the diagram again and have a look. So C2 has got a constant voltage there. Well, it's C3, wasn't it? It's C3 I looked at. So I've got constant voltage here. Why was I getting constant voltage? I should have been seeing some oscillation. Surely. So if I was referencing to here, how am I getting a negative voltage when that is a negative rail? Is that interesting or what? I mean, it's only a single rail supply. It's not dual rail or anything like that. So, how is it getting in that? That itself's a little bit odd. I want to see how strong this oscillation is. C2. All these switches here. This is why I need to see how strong it is. It's a bit more grounded. Let's have a look. Can't tell. There's a dual core cable going up there. I can't see which one's a shield, if there's a shield at all. Can't tell from that. Let's find C2, I'm going to try and check on there. Oh, that's that big one in the middle, that's right. I need to get into the C2 and measure that. And try and see what levels we've got at that point. Because that should be at least as high as the upper voltage in sine wave mode. If it's not, then I know the problem's further back. Right, so I should be able to test on either side, really. But I want to test on this side here. Um, so it's on the side closer to side C3, so it's the bottom side right now, I think. No, top side. So I'll measure onto that one there and see what level we get. Should be like 2.5 volts and all that. Like so I can actually get to that too, which is good. Let's click onto there. This is on. Um, levels stuff shouldn't matter. I just want to make sure. Sine wave. Okay. What do we get right here? Nothing. What am I missing? Oh, I'm on 50 volts of division. That's why I'm getting nothing. Even here, I'm getting nothing. That's interesting. I'm obviously missing something here. Because there is something present, but there's nothing on this cap that I can measure. And I thought there would have been. So I suppose I'll just do some measurements around here and see what we get. See if we get anything like these voltage levels here. And if we don't, it might give us an idea of where the problem could be. So I think I'm going to start basically with a collector, collector. Tip to start VT3. Because 
I know we've got oscillation because we can see it. So we'll see if we've got um, the level here on that resistor there, R3 to VT3. We'll try that first. Uh, where are you? VT3, where are you? VT5, VT4, VT8, VT7, VT2, VT3. There you go, there it is there. And one of them goes to R3. There's R3. So I want that terminal there. Which I hope you can see right there. Okay, so VT3 is right there. So I should be able to measure onto the rear leg of that and see what voltage levels we get. Um, Reference on the ground could be a problem. So I'm not seeing the right stuff here. One DC coupling. Again, get negative voltages. I'm measuring one kilohertz there, which is basically all we've got set to. So the oscillation is there. Peak to peak, four volts. So at that point there, I'm getting the right signal. I'm measuring the right place. No. I'll mention we're going to get one that goes to R14 on the R3 side of it. I wasn't getting much at all. So that's there. R14. So I'm getting 4 volts here, peak to peak, which is kind of the level I was expecting to find. Why couldn't I measure that on C2? Did I get something wrong there? That clearly says C2 right there. VT3 is there. See, this is a rear board view. Yeah, it's a rear board view, not a top board view. Maybe I was measuring the wrong thing. That makes sense, wouldn't it? So let's look at this again. So if that's a rear ball view, then the one this side is C2. Is it right? Yeah. So this is C2 here, which is what I measured before. I get 4.2 volts peak to peak with a DC offset. So it is there. Yeah, okay, I was measuring the one before, that's what it was. So 4.2 volt peak to peak, so yes. At least on that side of the cap. Let's check this side. That side has got nothing. See, 1.6 volts of noise. So maybe this cap is the problem. So I'm getting it in one side, not out the other. That side there, I could see it. This side here, I could not. Right, progress. So I think C2 is probably bad. Or it's being heavily loaded down by something. If I change the switches around, that should tell me if it's being loaded. So let's do that. Nothing. Yeah, I think that's a bad cap. Right, 
So I think we need to change that one as well. So let's get this thing apart. I'm trying to get in there's a solar one could be interesting though. It is odd that the manual doesn't tell you what the parts are, the actual values, stuff like that. It seems odd. There must be a page missing for the manual. There must be. So that tells you more. That's not good, please. There we go. So what are these things? 200 UF, 25 volt, and the other one, don't know, I can't see. Now, can I get down the back of the soldering iron? Yeah, I'm going to take the whole bloody panel off. Barely. So it's also a 200 UF 25 volt. Which way is positive? Positive that way. That is C2. Okay. What do I have? Two hundred UF thirty five volt, slightly better. But also very similar. Okay. Drop that in there. I've got to try and get through the solder because it's not removed. Right. So I'll replace both of these since they're both the same cap. I'll do them both. They're bound to be both be bad. And um, go from there. So I can just reach the things. So, so it's the same one. Positive downwards. What I might do is leave a small gap between them and the boards because then you can see the component markings. Right. It's actually underneath the parts, which is a bit of an inconvenient place for them to be. Right. Solid as it. I'm just getting there with it. Okay, looks good. Get to turn it on again. Not to run lucky in these ones out. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Well, let's try this again. She's not fully told us if I've got it right or not. Put a couple in with that thing. I need to put all of them in because I need to pull it apart again. I may need to. Maybe other problems yet. Negative. Positive. Pair it back up. Try it again. And we have a signal. Here we go. Let's test the to lock. So we have a sine wave, it's the top's flat topping. Doesn't seem to matter what the output level is set to, but the top's flat topping, so I've probably got another bag capacitor somewhere. But that is now working. So if I set it to one volt there, one volt there, I'm getting four volts peak to peak. So and this calibration is off slightly for the frequency, I think. Actually, no, it's pretty close. That's actually really close. Um, but yeah, that's working. DC RMS, no, it's not one. AC RMS, 1.42 volts at one. At 2.5 volts, it's measuring 3.42 AC RMS. So I'm not quite sure how relative the actual voltage is to this. Maybe it's been adjusted on the board, and so it's wrong now. Um, being a switching option, the DC one is kicked in, but it's not working very well. I can see it there. Doing. Square waves not working very well there. It's not at all right. So it's got more problems. Um, square wave peak to peak is doing five volts peak to peak square wave. So okay, two point five is that per waveform side? I'm not quite sure how this should be set up, so I'm probably going to have to go through the manual with this one and actually calibrate it all. But at least it's now actually working. Um, there is an output now. Yay. I suppose you could say it's fixed, but not completely fixed. Obviously, you need to figure out what's going on with the square wave. Why is that not um, a proper square wave rather than a pulse? There's probably another bad cap somewhere. Another thing fixed. Excellent. Fixing on output, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, the output loading. Of course. Uh, obvious. Yeah, that'd be what our waveform's wrong. Um, let's stick a load on it. Ohms. 600 ohms. Right, so it's 600 I'm loading, and we'll check it again on sine wave. ACIMS is 3.36 volts, so it's still off by quite a bit. 
Oh, I'm still getting flat topping on here. So I think it probably needs calibrating. Um, it's entirely likely. Someone's been playing with these adjustments. So I don't trust any of them at all. Um, I think it was faulty when I got it. I don't think it ever worked properly when I got it. So um, it's likely it's been broken the whole time and someone's been trying to adjust it. I have to do a calibration on it. So at one volt output, it's doing 3.3 volt peak to peak. And one volt this, it's probably an adjustment issue. One volt is actually accurate with 600 on loading. Okay. So it's got a square wave again. That's dirty. That switch is playing up as well. But it's definitely not a um, definitely not a square wave coming out of there. It's a micro pulse. So. So there's Smith trigger circuitry here, so that's C20, C21. Um, it's likely to be one of those that are a problem, because the pulse widths are not correct. Which pulse was missing? Was it the negative? Negative gain pulse was wrong. Oh, I can't figure it out. But maybe it might even be a slight adjustment here. It's RV9, RV8 and RV9. It may be one of those are misadjusted, which is why it's not square. It might be something as simple as that, actually. Let's figure out where they are. I should just read the manual, but you know, I like to figure stuff out as I go. RV8, RV9, and right there. Let's have a play with those, see if I can get the thing to be a square wave. Obviously, I'm going to do a proper calibration later on. Right now, I just want to play around with it and see what I get. Yeah, there we go. That's affecting it. So RV8 is affecting the pulse height. And RV9 is affecting the duty cycle. So there we go. That's now square wave. Excellent. What does this one do? Don't know, I can't tell. Let's write the end of the adjustment anyway. So I'm going to have to do a calibration on this thing, obviously. But uh, yeah, that is now putting a square wave. An awful lot of noise on there, but yep, it's a square wave. It's probably all this stuff acting as antennas. Yeah, it's moving around. Yeah, I'm going to have to pop a calibration on this, but that's really close now. Like 50.2 or 49.7, thereabouts. So that's pretty close. All right. Excellent. So it works, so this needs calibrating. 